on the 22nd of September 2017, myself and Justin came here to stall Victoria to investigate this old abandoned hospital. We stayed the entire night in this facility while conducting our investigation, and what we did find and experienced was certainly enough for us to come back. This part 2 episode picks up just 9 days after our first visit here, only this time it would be a solo mission for myself. Justin and I are obviously a team, but we are also free to go off and conduct investigations by ourselves when it's required, and this happens to be one of those situations. A solo mission like this to such a large location was definitely going to test my nerves and abilities as an investigator. But this was a challenge that I welcomed with open arms, and I was ready for the task. I'm going to show you where I've positioned a couple of time-lapse cameras at the front of the building. Just spin this around. Okay, here we've got the, the main building of the hospital. First time-lapse camera there. Looking straight over the top at the building. And there's another one positioned right there. And it's it has the front of the building in the foreground and it's pointed up at the moon. Which through time lapse you will see the moon pass over the building with the front of the building in the foreground, so that's what that's all about. I've also placed one on the top of the stairwell um, on the door frame as well that leads up to the second level in the courtyard. The first episode we covered all the backstory and the history, so this episode is all about the investigation and a few insights into what bizarre and confusing things you can find during the editing and reviewing process. And of course, the evidence found. I do hope this episode gives you a sense of the exciting mission I had in this awesome location. Keenan the owner would be on site but he would be staying in his private residence at the back of the location while I was investigating. All right, I'm just about to head into the hospital for the first time. I'm going to walk around and do some uh, still shots with um, UV infrared. Still shots, got the UV lights there and infrared floodlights there. So again, this is the home base. Got everything set up here. I came like fully prepared. Same as last week, basically. It's just me this time. Keenan's over the other side where he stays um, while he's renovating. Yeah, so I'm gonna head into the hospital now. Got EVP recorders in my pocket, EMF meter, so. Here goes.
Anybody here? Okay, I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to uh, start up the UV infrared still shots, take some photos. It's cooler in this room. Definitely cool. Hello. Anybody here? Okay, as I said before, sometimes you find bizarre and confusing things when you're reviewing your footage in the editing process, and you most likely noticed the bird that flew through the door as I took the first photo when I stood in front of the doorway. At the time, I didn't realise it was an actual bird. I did realise there was something caught, but the bizarre and confusing part is that I didn't react until the second photo, but it was the first photo in which the bird was captured. When you do snap a shot, the camera displays the photo very quickly before it resets ready for the next shot. But it wasn't until the second shot where I reacted after seeing the anomaly in the photo. At the time I couldn't work out what it was, but I did notice it and said what the hell is that? So as you can see here, the pictures from the Samsung camera have loaded into the editor in the correct order. And you can see the four photos of the doorway that I was standing at. And the first one, as you can see, does have the bird anomaly. And as we look at the second one, which is the one I reacted to in the video, there is nothing there. And we look back to the first, and sure enough, there's the bird, which is what the video suggests. And we look to the third photo, again, there's nothing there. And the same again on the fourth photo, there's nothing there. And we go back to the first photo again quickly, and yes, there's the bird. So we're going to take a look at the video and we'll listen to my reaction carefully. No reaction after the first photo. I clearly react after this photo and say, what the hell is that? 
And as we watch the third and fourth, I want to say right now that it is still spinning me out to this day because what was captured on video does not actually represent what took place. Okay, I'm going to try for some EVPs. I'm still in the children's ward. Um, just taking some still shots. Hearing noises. Um, all right. I'm going to introduce myself again. My name's Paul. I'm not here to harm you. I'm here to talk with you. Even if you're a, you're a child, a young child, I'm interested in you and why you might be still here. If you're an adult, and you can see me or you can hear me, please come up and speak to this, this device that I'm holding. Loud bang came from down there. I'll just review that as well. Was me whispering at the end of that I'll have to double check it later because when I heard that loud bang I started talking in this sequence there's definitely a few things going on that need analyzing so let's start with the noises I heard down the hallway These two noises definitely only happened when I started asking questions. Now let's see if those voices that came through were actually mine. Sure noise. Sure noise. 
After that, it's easy to tell that it was my voice after I heard that noise. Loud bang. Coming from down there. I'm just gonna stop the EVP for a second. Loud bang. Loud bang. Again, we can tell that's me whispering, but what about this voice that happens right in the middle of all that? Let's have a listen. Loud bang. That voice is not heard by the camera. Let's listen to the recorder again. When we look at the waveform of this recording, we can see exactly where the voice is. And it's actually a few syllables long, and it sounds like a male. It's a definite EVP, but it's very unclear of what it's saying. It has definite vocal tones to it though. The strange noises in the children's ward and the distinct light anomaly we caught in the hallway from our first visit, alongside those things we just analysed, certainly gives credence to the possibility of someone or something lurking around this section of the hospital. There was one part of this location that Justin and I forgot to investigate in when we were here first, and that's the kitchen area at the rear of the building on the ground level. We did do a walkthrough here during the day with Keenan but we totally forgot to come back here later that night and set up any sort of night vision cameras or even try for EVP in here. So I made a note to definitely come in here tonight and see what I could feel or find and also to set up a night vision camera. kitchen. This feels really 
creepy in here. We didn't go in here last week. We forgot to go in this bottom section last week. As I leave this kitchen area feeling rather creeped out, I position the first of 12 static night vision cameras that I'm about to place around the location, which include the Eating Hall, Infectious Disease Ward Camera 1, Camera 2, Camera 3, the Main Building Entrance Door, Main Building Hallway, Children's Ward, Upstairs Ward Hallway, and in the Upstairs Ward, and lucky last, the front entrance of the building. Once all these cameras were set up and recording, I made my way back over to the infectious disease ward. I truly believe there's a male entity inside this ward. Let's have a look. We don't mean you any harm. Whoa. I'm guessing that's a breeze because that's a strong cold gush. I'm guessing there's a door open somewhere or something. Can you feel that? I'm guessing there's a door open somewhere or something. Can you feel that? I'm guessing there's a door open somewhere or something. Can you feel that? A 
Okay, I'm gonna do spirit box. <clears throat> and then probably try for some EVP as well. What was that? I know it sounds noisy, but don't be afraid. Somebody in here. Are you watching me right now? This is where I got shivers last time. I know I'm alone and probably that's contributing, but... <clears throat> Can you make your presence known? You responded to me last week when I asked if there's a presence in here. I just want to note that I am using the modified spirit box here, which eliminates radio interference. And although I didn't capture one single word, later I would capture something very significant with this device in the eating hall.
Unfortunately, no intelligent response this time in this room, so I make my way over to the children's ward. This is an experiment that I've been wanting to do for a while now, where I'm just going to sit and play the piano through a software program on my laptop. The aim is to create a really relaxing atmosphere that's non-threatening, one that may draw out possible child spirits that are still here from the children's ward back in the day. Hopefully through seeing and hearing me play the piano in a relaxing state, it might encourage a possible spirit to come up and interact or even show itself on the camera. In the review process, this camera picked up nothing that you would consider abnormal with either vision or audio. But when I got to reviewing this camera, I found something interesting coming from the doorway to the right, where you can see a subtle yet noticeable light appear inside that room. It's only for a second or so, but when we zoom in on it, it looks like a type of glow coming off something shining. I had no infrared lights or torches or any sort of lighting in that room. The light only seems to be within that room, it doesn't bleed into the hallway at all. I can definitely rule out it being a car light, because as we look at the outside of the building here, these windows are the only chance that some light can enter that ward. And as you can see, the highway is at the front of the building with the cars going past. There is no road alongside this building which cars could travel. And let's not forget from our first investigation that we captured a very distinct light anomaly in this exact spot heading down the hallway to the right. I sat here for roughly 45 minutes playing the piano. These sort of experiments I really want to try again in the future as I think they have a lot of potential to encourage interaction from spirits. Can you see me now? Can you respond to me? Can you tell me to get out through this device? Come on, I'm pushing. Can you tell me to get out through this device? Come on, I'm pushing. Come on, I'm pushing. Come on, I'm pushing. Capturing the only voice thus far in this doorway is incredible and significant. Let's look back to last week again. Got an EVP standing right here. Talking to another bloke. Talking to paranormal. Mickey was talking to him today and then they said, um, well, get out. He, he said he was, they're the only ones to really, that I know they investigated about three years ago. Yeah. One night. And he said that he had a dark figure, like a black figure. What are the chances a voice would come through in the doorway of this room? Remember this is the modified SB7 spirit box with the antenna removed, which eliminates the radio interference. We've had another incredible direct response with this device before at the Rosewater Hotel, seen here. Is there a man named Robert up here? Robert. Did you hear Robert then? Yep. Is there a man named Robert up here? 
Robert. Notice how there's a large spike of static just before each word. Could this be the spirit's frequency infiltrating the radio waves? There was another strange thing that happened while I was in this room. There is another loud unexplained noise that happens. Let's have a look. One possibility could be that I sneezed, although I don't remember sneezing while I was in this room. The sudden downward motion of the torch in my hand could suggest that I sneezed. Even by raising the brightness of this video, it's still difficult to see if I actually sneezed, although I do admit the hand suggests that I did sneeze. Give me some sort of response if you can hear my voice. You're here through this. Can you speak a word through this device? Just one. Concentrate your energy on it. What the hell is that? I just thought I heard a thump on the wall. When I heard this thump, I recall thinking it was either on the wall or somewhere outside, perhaps. Just one. Concentrate your energy on it. Just one. Concentrate your energy on it. Just one. Concentrate your energy on it. The camera in the hallway also picked up this thump, but it comes through more faintly, which tells us that it's further away from this camera. Just one. If you're a child, a lady or a man, I would like to know your name. Can you please tell me? Can you see me standing here?
Can you let me hear your footsteps? Can you tell me your name? Can you repeat the name Paul? There was weird noises there, I'll have to review that later. After reviewing this recording and listening very carefully, I could not make out anything that sounded like a vocal or a voice. decided to sleep in the children's ward as you can see I've set up a trigger object a little doll got the mel meter in front of it the camera on the doll and the mel meter and I've put another IR light in front of that stack of mats, floor mats and of course there's that camera there watching over me so it's about four o'clock in the morning um, I'm actually Tired, but I don't know if I'll be able to sleep straight off. I feel tired, but at the same time, I've been walking around a fair bit and still pretty uh, amped, if that makes sense. So, I'll just leave these cameras run. There's cameras upstairs and over at the um, infectious disease ward too. So, hopefully the cameras pick up something. <sighs> All right. I'm gonna switch this off and See if I can sleep. Hopefully something or someone comes and annoys me. Hope. 
Right here I had been asleep for roughly 15 minutes and I remember waking up because I thought I could hear breathing over my head and of course I was left wondering whether I was hearing my own breathing or someone was actually standing over me breathing and I eventually sit up and start looking around with the torch. After enhancing the audio on both of these cameras, I could not find the breathing that I thought I was hearing. The only thing of relevance that I could find to suggest that someone or something may be there was a slight spike in the melmeter when I was shining the torch down the hallway, but the spike was only one milligauss. This is still considered to be within the normal range of fluctuation. Sleeping in a location like this in the dark is definitely creepy and it keeps you on edge as you're listening for things and anticipating something going to happen. But at this point I was pretty exhausted so as you can see I dozed off for the last two hours until the sun came up. Although I was unable to have my ghost bro Justin beside me this time, I was still able to conduct a pretty decent investigation and gather evidence to build on from last time we were here. And indeed, Justin and I do come back to this creepy location. Only this time we join forces with a group of other investigators from Adelaide, which include our friend and female medium, Tracy. These guys take a little bit different approach to us when it comes to investigating. I believe it will make an interesting third installment to this location when we do upload it. So from Beyond Boundaries Paranormal, I hope you have all enjoyed this investigation and thanks for watching.